And now we've got Madeline talking about the apple fruit. Oh, oh, so we I, like, I forgot I to bring it. Show and tell without anything to show. Right. So, you know, as long as you tell, um, make, make, that, make it that way you will. Um, one of the things, I, I'm i such a fan of the apple cream. I, I really love these things. They were the first machine that I programmed in 1981. Uh, oh, sorry, they weren't the first. They were high scientific, so the first. Um, second machine. Um, some of the things I loved about the Apple III is it has an operating system. Mm. And and not, you know, you, you got these, at the time, you had these guys running around with their Apple II saying they were the best thing <laughs> since sliced bread. You could not get any better <laughs> than was this Apple II. And the Apple III came along. The Apple II had a disk operating system and that's it. So, you, you know, you, you had a disk operating system, you had BASIC in from, that was it. There, there, was, there was nothing else to, um, from the machine time side to kind of interact with to do anything. And the Apple III was designed to change all of that and make it a, um, a much more customisable machine. So in the operating system, you, you, you could suddenly have different device drivers for different devices um, and they didn't necessarily have to be um, they didn't have to be booted from a, a particular disk like anything uh, that was slightly different on the Apple II. So because the Apple II only had, a, had the disk operating system and you know basically ROM, um, the way you introduced drivers for different devices was you had a, you would boot a modified DOS. Right. Um, Apple III did not like that at all. It had a device driver for its console as well. So suddenly you had this machine that didn't have a character set in ROM. You loaded the character set into RAM. Um, and you had a, a bunch of, you, you could have a bunch of different things for the console. You didn't necessarily have to have a screen. And interestingly, to make them faster as well, so it's a, um, it has a 2 megahertz 6.5 CO2, um, and you could turn off the video display as well so that, uh, so that it would calculate things faster. <laughs> um, so... One of the things that, that kind of annoys me with this machine being my most favourite is I see so many comments about them, particularly in Apple II forums, but in a bunch of Macintosh ones as well, of how the 3 was just incredible failure. Oh. Like, go and go and log on to YouTube and search Apple III and there'll be all of these wankers lining up with <laughs> their um, with their little stories about how shit the Apple III was. And I can guarantee you, none of those dudes have ever sat in front of one. And, and you know, and probably, maybe they have, maybe they've got a friend that's got one somewhere, but, you know, you take one, look at it, and you go, oh, I've got to use, you know, these, I've got to use these particular system utilities to format a disk, and then I can't just copy files from one, from one disk to the other without loading another program to do it. It was already very logical, but, you know, when you're coming from, very simple base 6502 systems, then all of a sudden this looks quite sort of complex. Um, so one of the things, <laughs> the, the comments that I see are all kind of rumour based and it's it's been really interesting over, you know, the last, uh, what are we talking, 33, 32, 33 years, I guess. Um, to have people that weren't part of that computing re revolution in the 80s talking about these machines now, <laughs> it's like a Chinese whisper kind of situation. And you guys would all get it, you know. Um, you, you've got millennials who <laughs> will hear a rumour about something and they might just embellish it a little bit and, and then suddenly the stories that are coming back to you are quite bizarre. Um, drop three inches. Has anybody heard yeah. of the drop three to inches? To reset the chips, but... Is there enough mass in those chips for them to reseat? I can't no, imagine. I so. They're just going to no. sit there still, unless you've really got weight on top of them. <laughs> um, so, so basically, if you don't know what the drop three inches thing was, they, they overheated and they 
poof, they pop themselves out of their sockets. Is, it, is that all true? Or? As, as, well, it wasn't really that the machine got so incredibly hot that it was firing ice things out of the machine. <laughs> that, that didn't really happen. They're just sliding um, out gradually. What, 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 what actually did happen was there were about 200 Apple Threes that went out to uh, stores before the release of the machine. The motherboards in those 200 machines were um, the very first manufactured. Apple was using a different manufacturer for, um, for the sockets than they had used in the past. And they had this problem where the ICs would walk out of the sockets after a number of power-on, power-off cycles. So you can imagine that, you know, you, you turn this thing on, the motherboard gets a bit hot, um, so it, it, ch it changes, um, I, I guess, the, the flexibility of where the legs on the ICs are cycling, fitting, yeah. fitting into those sockets and it's cycling hot and cold. So, you know, the IC might move, move a little bit. So then after doing this like 20 or 30 times, you might have a problem. Why call your operating system SOS? <laughs> sophisticated <laughs> operating system. Why? Why? It just doesn't help. Uh, it doesn't, but it kind of, you know, explains it it's from cool. the outset. Yeah, it's cool, but it doesn't help. <laughs> SOS. It was also their budget, uh, SOS. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was quite wealthy back in there. I love the thing, don't get me wrong. Yeah, they, they made buckets off the Apple II. Yeah. Yeah. Apple II was yeah. very popular. Yeah. So, so, one so more thing. thing, the first release had no vents, right? Well, the, none, none of them, them had been really. <laughs> because you didn't um, want vents with the aluminium inside, which but, didn't help with the heat, right? They do oh, kind of have, um, they do have airflow from the front of the disc right yeah. to the back of the slot. The and the the um, the expansion cards that they manufactured for them didn't really have one of those kind of metal things at the back of the slots to, you know, to mm. cover it up, to stop the stuff getting inside. Right. So the... So those expansion slots kind of uh, kind of operated as you know a bit of airflow, and the disk drive had quite a big quite a big opening at the front, so you did get airflow with them. The whole thing, the reason they're so heavy is they're just a big piece of casting. Yeah, casting. It's beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so. Adrian, have you got one? Oh, quite a few. <laughs> really? Quite Apple Threes? We probably got more than that. Yeah, well, that. How does this fit in with like the Lisa and the Mac? I mean, is this kind of... Well, it's a precursor to it's a, the... Precursor to so, the... Um, they were so, both practical. They came out the same time. So, so this, this is 1981. Sort of, yeah. Um, yeah. The Macintosh, as we know, is 1984. Mm -hmm. The Lisa is 1983. Yeah. So the, the Lisa took a lot of things from, um, from SOS, including the hierarchical file mm -hmm. system. Apple's first hierarchical file system was this thing. Um, I, I don't know. That means know. like folders and things? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah folders and subdirectories. And, and that then, freaked you know, people out too. They weren't used to it. And it was revolutionary. Absolutely revolutionary. Yeah. They were coming from DOS 3.3, which had, you know, Nothing. one file one system. Yeah. No yeah. folders whatsoever. Um, file names in other games. It was it was an amazing machine. I think they just the marketing, jobs, the whole thing just wrecked it. Um, a lot of people say that the problem with them was they were designed by committee, <laughs> yep. and um, I think one of the the biggest mistakes that Apple made with the design of the machine um, was it was it was a closed architecture, and. And their purchases and their fan base was basically created by Steve Wozniak and his want to have everything for free. And I think if you um, if you look at Apple over the years and you, you kind of um, try and identify what was happening, if Steve let's let's take Steve Jobs out of the equation, if Steve Wozniak had designed all of this stuff. It would have been free and nobody would, ma would have made any money at all. And quite frankly, he probably would have ended up making some phone freaking machines and maybe a, a hobbyist <laughs> computer that really didn't sell much stuff. Um, every was needs a Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Right, they every job needs a Jobs. But Jobs had his hand in this and that was part of the problem. Um, 
It was committee, you're right. It was designed by committee. Uh, he, he had gone well and truly over to the lease, and I think this was... Yeah, yeah but he now was just, was just, this was his business account. Yeah. This yeah, was Wendell Sandler's yeah. job. What's that? The, yeah, the, the one thing for me, I was talking to Madeline about this last night, is it looks very different to every other article. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looks, when you actually look at it, though, yeah. it looks like business, business machines machine. of the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even the fact that it actually has the numeric pattern, I think, it, does it have the double zero or the triple zero on the keypad? It's it's I of that know. it's of that kind of era where it was designed as a business machine, mm. whereas the Apple II was much more like a toy. Yeah. This was a business machine, and it's one of the only Apple products I think that it looks completely different. Totally it just it actually looked very similar if you, if you look at it as a the old IBM yeah. PC. Mm. Yeah. Or a pet. Yes. Yes. Or yeah. a pet. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yes. What and was the sorry, pet. What no. was the cost of it back then? I think it was seven or eight grand, wasn't it? US. Yeah, I bought one new. Jesus. Yeah. Back um, then in eighty yeah. one. Yeah. So twenty thousand? Um I paid I paid for the base unit like seven mm. seven nine five or something. Mm -hmm. Um the but I bought a Kager monitor, mm. um, which quite Quite frankly, were better than the monitor threes. Monitor threes are a little bit dim. Um, the the Kaga density monitors from Japan are just incredibly bright. Really good contrast. Really, really crisp. Lovely monitor. Um, but yeah, they were dim. Do you ever get a chance, guys? Have a find the photo of look down the cover off. It's beautiful, isn't it? Obi? On the yeah. inside, how it goes like that. With the thing. Uh, I love. It. I don't know. They're they're an interesting design machine. There, there's but they do weigh a ton, right? yeah. and they really do. That that base pan, I don't know. I think they're like eight or eight or nine kilos. The base pan is probably six. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's they're they're weighty. Adrian doesn't really have luck with them. No, I can tell. I yeah. I, yeah, I don't. He kind, of, he kind of tolerates it. That's the thing. You've got to remember. <laughs> or, I'm not an Apple II guy either. This is. This stuff predates me, because it literally predates me. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's hard, simple. but I understand so the importance. You're simple. If it you're wasn't simple. for that, we wouldn't have the Lisa. Yeah. If we didn't have the Lisa, we wouldn't have the Mac. If we didn't have the Mac, obviously, where would we be today? Commodore 64. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one of these YouTubers came on one of the um, forums in social media the other day, and he says, some users of the Apple III reported floppy disks melting in the machine because bullshit. they ran so hot. Bullshit. <laughs> I call bullshit on that. Cool story, bro. These were dragons. Well, and I said, well, no, they didn't. In order to melt a floppy disk, you'd have to have like 106 degrees Celsius, wouldn't you? By which time, they got a bunch of paper labels all over them. They would be spontaneously combusting, man. Like, you know, don't engage with the psycho. Yeah, I think it's a good half cup of case. Sounds like a good store. Smile and wave. Yeah. <laughs> and Another hot tub three machine uh, comment was users of the Apple three could only run their machine for a few minutes at oh. a time, <laughs> given the temperature generated inside the case. I'm not making this up. Like the, these are, you know, what these people believe. Yeah. Uh, really, mate? Really? Uh, would. Were we so backward and cave like in 1981 that you know we spent eight grand on our machines and oh, fucking two minutes is up? Sorry, excuse my French. Let's come back in an hour, let it cool down. You put a fan at the back of that, would keep it cool. Um, really the case. And I, I guess you know, in terms of longevity, I wrote a suite of software for a finance company in Queensland that had four of these networked together um, using. A Corbis system, so you had transporter cards in them. Uh, you had the the Corbis interface card for the, the hard disk drives. There were the the hard disk drives weren't connected individually to machines; they were connected to this transporter system. Um, and those four Apple threes ran from 1982, 1983, I think I finished the project until 1999. Wow. Uh, one of those machines, the memory card died in one. Uh, that was it. They were like, what, 
Once they'd iron out those those overheating problems that they had when they shipped the first 200 units mm. and the reputation just was in the toilet mm. from that point, they, they redesigned the motherboards, they didn't run as hot, and they were just rock solid. Beautiful. Completely rock solid. Even today, you can be pretty well guaranteed if you buy one on eBay, there's only going to be one of eight things wrong with them. And they're, they're really quite simple. The cost. Yeah, there's only yeah. eight parts. <laughs> <laughs> are they still available on eBay? Are they? Yeah. Every once in a while. Yeah. And not in Australia. No. Right. Not mm -hmm. in Australia. In the US, you can pick them up readily. The price has been creepy, but uh, yeah, I I bought I I got a couple from a client here a long time ago in Australia. What 2007, and uh, that little machine to play with. Um, had to program a bootloader into it manually and then plug in I uh, use I think a serial card to uh, make a disk through a external interface but I've got I've got boot disks and you know, it works and they, they are reliable the, the only unreliable thing I'll say about them is the uh, the keyboard encoder the, the 3600 shocking. keyboard encoder they're, they're, absolutely shocking now you can tell me whether this was a problem so I had heard the 3600 chips were were so inclined to be damaged as static that they shipped them separately to the computer, and oh, you had to install them. Yourself. I told you that, and <laughs> and that was that is one hundred percent. Cool story, bro. No. Yeah, no, one hundred percent correct. So the, the machine was in its shipping box. Yeah. Um, they had a separate static bag with the the keyboard encoder yeah. in there, and the dealer installed it on premises. Because if you move that machine with your, your hand touching the bottom of the case, which is metal, which is attached to, you know, the motherboard and the keyboard encoder, you'll kill it. Wow. So you ground them yourself and you still can kill it? Absolutely. They have, are so, so sensitive. How are you meant to install them and properly ground yourself? Just gonna, just gonna we check use my the ground car. and hope for the best. <laughs> and are those chips still available these days? No. No, so there's a third party replacement. Joe Stry, Strozna made a replacement for them. Does the same um, job? Yeah. So there's a different one for the three and the three plus, but he made like a universal chip that that can be used because out of all the things that I've had go wrong with them, so keyboard encoder is the only thing that died. And so, did they have a color video output or only monochrome? Color video uh, output. But the monochrome well. three was that was green screen, wasn't it? Yes. Guy has a real computer in it, not like any <laughs> Um, I've talked for too long, haven't I? No, no. You can keep um, I've got a question. Yeah. Um, are you going to sell me one? Maybe <laughs> reactive micro. Um, I would sell it with a working profile, um, monitor three, bunch of things. So I'll think about it and Ooh, think about that. How many multiple thousands is this? <laughs> Somebody did ask me that. I don't know. Do you happen to have any leases? <laughs> um, yeah, I do, but I don't want to sell any. Oh, okay. I've got three of them. Which model? Um, so I've got a two. I've got a one. Oh wow. I've got a two five and a two ten. Oh. A Lisa. Yeah. Lisa's. Oh wow. I got. I got something. I think it's a Mac XL, but it doesn't say Mac XL anywhere on it. Would no, they don't. Oh, okay. The only way you can tell yeah. is by oh, the the motherboard at the back. Yeah. Um, got they've it. got three ports instead of four. Oh, okay. The two parts has got four ports on yeah. the motherboard at the bottom. Okay. Or looking at what it shows when it boots up, right? Yeah. The problem yeah. with mine is it won't boot. It boots up most of the way and then freezes. Yeah, right. And so I haven't got any common. Discs, haven't got any discs with it, so I can't really repair it easily. Yeah, it's common. Did, does anyone remember going to the um? They they used to have a computer fair or computer something or other in the. What's the tower in the Sydney Tower? You know the yes, I do. yes, I do. Yeah. And they, they Apple was showing off the Lisa there, and yeah. I remember going there. It would have been nineteen eighty one or yeah. two, or like really early days. Yeah, showing off the Lisa there, and that was my it was I was just yeah like jaw dropping like this graphical user interface and was like so oh, they, they nearly lynched Steve Jobs as being like a witch for the GUI and that thing. It's yeah. like it was so amazing. Yeah. <coughs> like nothing anybody had ever seen. No, nah, no, nah, it was jaw dropping. Everyone was just flabbergasted at seeing this because it, back then it was like you know, you would have your ZX eighty one and your you know, your your pet and your 
what else was around at the time to yeah, begin? I remember all those. It's like when movies. they introduced the Mac in '84, oh, like they showed. I think they pre-showed it at the end of '83, and like there was an audible gasp from the audience because the screen could show different fonts. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, and it was like literally, it's like, oh it's my god. Like it, it? And the last time we kind of had a moment like that was when they iPhone? introduced the iPhone. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it was yeah. revolutionary that you could have the internet in your pocket. Yeah. Look at us now. So, so one last thing, uh, Apple II emulation mode. Apple III had it. Uh, it was uh, it emulated a forty eight k Apple II. Apple II users were absolutely incensed by this. This was the work of the devil. Um, because there had been released a 16K expansion card, you know, which made the the Apple II 64K. And the Apple II couldn't... Uh, sorry, the Apple III couldn't even do that. It's only 48K. Um, but it would run most Apple II software, wouldn't it? This is the thing. Like, everything that was released at the time and would run a on a 48k Apple II because that's what everybody had. <laughs> Maybe only one or two programs needed a 64k. Yeah. The, the massive difference between the Apple IIs and the Apple threes again, is the way you address those uh, that higher memory. On yeah. Apple II, it's really painful. Like, you, you had to write a lot of code to stick stuff in that 16k of RAM. And there were some interface cards that, that had a way of... Of flipping banks so that you could actually have a couple of 16k banks and you could switch between them so it, it you know potentially gave you like a 96k machine or something um, but it was difficult um, the Apple 3 SOS did all of that for you so you just had a 6502 that suddenly could access 256k RAM without you having to do anything well wow. You, you just treat it as one big block of RAM, which was great. Um, and the other, the other cool, cool story bro moment uh, is the emulation mode was not optimal, <coughs> so the Apple III could not take advantage of Apple II software. Mm -hmm. And in actual fact, I, I never found anything that wouldn't run on an Apple III that was, you know, Apple II related. The only thing that it might have had was slight kind of joystick incompatibilities or something. Anyway, I, look, I, I could literally talk about this thing for, you know, another 16 hours. Thanks quick, for quick, listening. Quick question. Are you going to bring one in? I will. I'll do it. Did Apple III run um, Apple II software much faster in emulation mode? No, exactly the same speed oh, okay. because um, like the, it's something about memory timings and, and latching RAM to you know to cycles or something, and then and then interrupts had to be a certain speed, yeah. something like that. Otherwise, it would crash.